Happy New Year, everybody. What a great start to the new year. What a great holiday season. I hope you all enjoyed your holidays as much as we did. What a blessed Christmas we had. And um, just a great start to the new year. This morning, um, I've already exercised. And um, although I didn't sleep well, um, I'm determined to push through my day and push through my struggles in a different way this year and uh, got out for a really nice walk with the mountain boy this morning. Um, good exercise, some fresh air. Um, always exciting out here. We saw a golden and a bald eagle yesterday that were not even 50 yards away from us. So really cool stuff, but um, it's just a choice to uh, embrace your days and to love them regardless how they are and, and, and what they're like. But my name is Tammy Treyer and I am uh, from TreyerWilderness.com. My family and I live 100% off-grid in northern Idaho and we love sharing our faith-led preparedness, homesteading, off-grid living, simple living experiences with the world. We also educate at TreyerWildernessAcademy.com, and uh, I'm really excited to share today with you about new beginnings and what that means and what that looks like uh, for us all. And one of the big things is that um, in 2018, my goal and my theme was living with intention. And we focused on really, you know, looking at our lives, what matters most to us. Good morning, Tammy. You know, looking, looking at what mattered most to us in 2018, living by our terms, living with intention. And I tried to refocus everybody on that all year long because I really feel that that is one of the most important things that we can do for ourselves, our families is to know what it is that is most important to us. And um, unlike society that is just geared in such a crazy way, crazy pace, focus, very jaded, you know, we need to get back to our roots and be able to really um, focus on, on the simplicity and, and what matters. And, you know, we, we embrace this new year and, uh, let me ask you this first. How did you do last year when it came down to figuring out what it meant to live by your terms and to live with intention last year? What did you establish was most important to you? Uh, most important to me is always God and making sure that God is first. Um, I know this sounds odd to some people, um, but it is a very large truth that everything, our joy, our peace, our comfort comes from God. Um, many would think that that would be our spouse, and our spouse is definitely somebody that we can get all those things from, but we should be looking for it from God first, that He is our all, and God is my all, my first, always. Diana says, good morning all, it's afternoon here, today is Craig's 60th birthday, and we're headed out, I'll have to catch the replay, have a great day to everyone. Thank you, sweet friend. Happy 60th birthday, Craig. Enjoy your outing and look forward to hearing from you later on. Thank you for popping in, my dear friend. So for me, focusing on God, making sure that that was where my focus was, drawing into him so much more, um, especially through our circumstances last year. And they have traveled into this year, but our perspective is just so different, um, which I'll share in a little bit. But also, you know, valuable time with my mountain man and my mountain boy and my goals. What were my goals were to write and to start our academy and our academy is live and uh, to expand on that. And that is what I'm doing this year. So, you know, New Year's resolutions, I feel, are kind of, there's a lot of hype to them. There's a lot of pressure to them. And I think that's why people fail. Plus, uh, oftentimes we set such big resolutions for ourselves that they're almost impossible, or we set too many. Um, it's really important to have big goals. 
big goals that are scary because it makes us work harder. It makes us step out of our comfort zone and um, they're more likely to be achieved. But having an accountability partner is really important too, which we're going to talk about. So how have you guys done with your uh, year in 2018, establishing what living with intention meant for you? What were those things? And um, I don't know if today is going to be like the last time, but last time I was on, on live, um, not all the comments were coming through. So maybe I will see if I can check on that periodically here on my iPad just to make sure. Because I got off, I thought you guys were awful quiet, and then I, I got off and realized that all the comments were just like not making it through to the screen. So um, I apologize that I wasn't answering some we have some really awesome things to, to share today, too. Um, testimonials that are just amazing. Um, I'm liable to echo here, so bear with me a second. Yes, I am live. Okay, let me just make sure my volume is down. And this way I can also see what is going on here and see if you guys are commenting. Okay. If I can check on that oh. periodic. Okay. Good morning, Deb. Good morning, Rachel. Yep, they're not coming. Oh, there they are coming across my screen. And good morning, Mama Mona. Thank you, my dear. Thank you, thank you. You look marvelous yourself. <laughs> okay. So I'm so glad you guys are joining me. I just feel really good about this year. Somebody asked me yesterday, knowing our circumstances for 2018, what 2019 looks like. And this was my response. Far so good. There we go. I'm back. Hey, good morning, Mike. Okay, sorry about that, guys. I was spinning. Good afternoon, Sylvia. Welcome. Okay, so as I was saying, the enemy is fighting me already, but we're going to fight back. Somebody asked me yesterday, knowing our circumstances for this past year with our financial situation, what 2019 looks like and, and how we are viewing it. And I said that the average person would probably see it as very grim and that we will end up homeless, that we would end up homeless, but I'm choosing to see it with great excitement and waiting to see the miracles that God is going to bring for us. Um, we all go through ups and downs. We all go through rough times. It's all just a matter of our perspective, how we handle it, and how much we allow the enemy to step in and really rip us apart, tear us down. And, you know, spiritual warfare is a really big thing. And the more you learn that and the more you're aware of it, um, the m more you can quickly adapt and overcome when he starts attacking. And, uh, you know, we are in that spot right now. Uh, I'll know more today and I'll be able to report more next week. But uh, that is potentially um, our 2019. And if that is what, um, you know, how things end up, we're just going to roll with it. It's, it's the way it's supposed to be. Um, it's the way things are meant to be. And we need to op keep spinning this morning. Like I said, he's, he's fighting me here because I've got good things to share. So, you know, perspective, keeping our focus on the right things when, when things go upside down is really important. And... Being resilient and persevering, these are all big words, but what it boils down to is that for us, um, the one thing that helped us greatly was holding on to God's word. Psalms 91 and Ephesians 6 came to mind this morning when I was thinking about these things um, in regard to our last year. And one of the greatest blessings um, was the strength we found in our home and the bond that we have created for the three of us. It has just been really amazing and to see that just tighten over the holidays was just amazing and you know we go through all kinds of things and I just want you to know that the purpose of my videos is to give you a place to come every week where you can find Re, you know, strength, uh, accountability partner, um, somebody who can maybe relate, somebody that's going to show empathy. And it's not just me. We've got such an awesome group of 
people that have formed in this community that I am just so proud to see when someone needs help, they're constantly reaching out and helping one another. And that's just really awesome. And that's what this is about. Um, I have something really awesome to share with you in a little bit that just really makes my heart sing. But if you weren't joining me last year, before we go into the new beginnings, one thing that you really need to sit down and do is figure out what is most important to you in your life. And make sure that that is part of your focus, that those things that are most important to you are things that become non-negotiable, are things that are blocked on your calendar that cannot be hijacked. And for me, that is my time with God in the morning. Um, and that tends to become an all day affair. I mean, I'm constantly in communication, constantly reading his word. It's part of my writing and what I'm doing. Um, I'm writing a couple books this year is my goal. Um, I'm working on some devotionals and also uh, another book to go along with my How to Embrace an Off-Grid Lifestyle. So, you know, he's always ever-present in my life, and that's just because that's how I make it. My guys are really important to me, making sure I have quality time with my guys. Uh, being able to throw myself back into creativity. When I decluttered the house last year, I really re-embraced my creativity and my creative juices and muscles, whatever you want to call it, but I've started drawing again. I love doing pencil art and I love doing black ink. So I've started getting involved with that. I've been also doing some leather work, which is also a passion of mine. So making sure that we have a balance and that we're not leaving out the things that we're good at. Just because you're a mom doesn't mean you can't pick up a book and read. It doesn't mean that you can't do projects that are important to you. Good morning, Holly. You know, there's so many things that are, uh, I, I guess, thought or um, just associated with society's fast pace is that, you know, we, we aren't supposed to take time for ourselves and we're supposed to feel guilty for taking time for ourselves. Part of my routine is my exercising big time because I'm focusing on healing my body. So those are things that are non-negotiable to me. And it's important that we have those things, we establish those things, and we focus on those things because those are the things that are going to bring the joy back into our life, right? What are some of those things for you guys? I would love to know. Um, and, and what your goals are for 2019. That's really important. Like I said, I don't believe in New Year's resolutions, but I am extremely big on goal setting and planning and reevaluating those things and also um, creating habits to make those new things, those new goals, and those new things happen in my life. Um, next week, we will talk about a new app that I started using. And you don't need to use an app. You can use pencil and paper, too, which I'll share with you then. But um, we'll talk about planning the goals and how to put things in place to create those habits that we're going to need to continue to embark on our new beginnings. So what does a new beginning mean? What does that look like for you? For me, new beginnings don't mean... Hey, there we go. It was just spinning and spinning. I hate when it does that. If you're watching and it's breaking up, when you watch the replay, it won't be like that. Um, Tammy says our goals are to start anew and to find joy again. It's very easy to lose our joy because we lose our focus on the things that are most important oftentimes. And one of the things is, oh, awesome. Mama Mona just said painting again. Mama Mona is someone that I spend time with and absolutely enjoy her company locally here. Uh, she's near and dear to me. And that woman has a tremendous gift to paint. And I have been encouraging her, so I'm excited to hear that because she's got an amazing gift. So I'm cheering you on, Mama. I'm cheering you on. Um, when we lose our our focus, and, and guys, you're gonna, you're gonna lose your focus. It could be daily that we lose our focus depending on what we're going through and what our circumstances are. And that's what new beginnings mean to me. A new beginning starts with a new year. We have a new beginning. We are, in, we are able to embrace something new. And, and really, every year brings ups and downs, good, bad, and the ugly. And 
When we learn to just realize that every year is going to have that, you know, we may have uh, more character building years some years than others. That was certainly that for us last year. And, and character's good, uh, you know, character's good. Uh, sometimes we need to be broken down and, and brought anew. Um, can be painful, but there's purpose in everything. I really believe that. But, you know, the thing is we need to realize that every day is a gift. Every day is a chance to breathe. Every day is a chance to start over. And if we're making mistakes, it's okay if we're making mistakes. It's important that we learn from them and every day that we learn to start again and try again. Rachel says, some of my goals include keeping up with journaling and reading daily or almost daily, traveling to a destination to where I've never been, painting more and loving others more. That's awesome. That's awesome. We're pretty, we're pretty in line. Um, I've got some additional ones in there um, with my healing and my health, but that's just it. Is is like journaling is a perfect example. How many of you try to journal and it's very hard to keep up with it because life happens. Kids need attention at night or whenever you set your time. And I have set my journaling to be at night um, around 7.30, 8 o'clock so that I can start winding down. I can doodle and draw in my journal while I'm, I'm recapping on my day and also embracing what I want to do for my next day. And I'm trying to make that a solid thing in my schedule. I'm also doing that so that 8.30 is our bedtime every night so that we can get on a good, healthy uh, sleeping so we can get on a good healthy sleeping pattern because when we're sleeping at night that's when our bodies are healing the most and when you neglect your body and you neglect good sleep that is what happens awesome Rachel awesome Rachel says fasting for my health and Sylvia says cancer free for a year now it's time to get my body in better shape by eating better and exercising it's good to be alive awesome I'm celebrating that with you Sylvia and thank you for sharing that that's awesome Tammy says, I was journaling for a long while. Now I'm out of the practice. Need to pick it up again. Exactly. And this is where we can hold each other accountable. Um, next week when I share this thing with you that I'm using, um, I, there's a way that we can be accountability partners on there as well. But just every week to regroup ourselves and redirect ourselves is really important. When you see yourself falling off the bandwagon, whatever it may be, to get back up on it. That's a thing. What it means for us to be, <laughs> of course it came back on as I'm flipping you guys upside down. I am relocating. This is painful and I hate when it does the spinning like that on us. So we're going to relocate here um, to a different spot and see enough to stay with me here. Okay, so um, I don't know what I was saying. And that's the beauty of live video. You get to see me. I'm just as real as you. I have no idea where I was at the moment. But what I am going to share is what it needs to look like for new beginnings. We need to give ourselves grace. Um, a day-to-day -day process that we may need to start over each day. If, if things don't work, sometimes we need to reevaluate. Sometimes our goals or our desires may not be in line with God's and that does make a difference so you need to keep that in mind that may not be something that is important to you but for me it is and it makes a difference it really does um, it's a matter of beating your head against a wall or having smooth sailing so when you're in line with God and you ask him and I'm gonna share something later um, in regard to that but um, it means that we're resilient and that we're willing to uh, get up brush ourselves off, that we're ready for, with a passion to persevere, to make our dreams and desires part of our life, that we're ambitious, happy, focused people that are going to make mistakes along the way, and we're going to show ourselves grace, right? Okay, but we will have the tools and the accountability partner to grab our bootstraps, kick off the dirt, kick the enemy to the curb, stomp him to where he belongs, and to bring the joy back into our lives. So if you don't feel like you have those strengths, I'd like to disagree with you. I'd like to argue that with you right now. And, and tell me if you don't feel you have those strengths. 
Um, it may not be one of your dominant traits, and maybe all through life you have been made to feel as though you're not capable of those things. You're meek, shy, not bold, bold enough. And, and well, today I want to encourage you to focus on being bold. Be bold. And if you don't have people in your life to help um, encourage you, come here every Wednesday because that's my goal. I want to encourage you to live a better life, to live a healthier life, to be happy, to be joy-filled, and to show yourself grace, and to be willing to understand that sometimes a new beginning might be every day until you get it right, until you get the right thing in place, until you have the right uh, set of tools to get you there. Good morning, Candy. Yes, thank you. I, I am better. Um, I'm still fighting this. Uh, Still fighting those crazy drops. I've been getting up at 2 o'clock every morning and not going back to sleep until 6. And then the alarm goes off at 6.30. So I am still fighting, but I am fighting uh, with a smile and determination. So I am going to beat this, and I'm going to find the tools I need, as I was saying. So for those of you that feel you can't do this, I feel that you can do this. And sometimes you just need the right people in your life to build the character in you, or more so to just encourage you to build that character trait. So if you don't feel that you are courageous, that you are resilient, that you are able to persevere, I encourage you to join me every Wednesday here. Every Wednesday, 10.30 Pacific Standard Time, and we will continue to figure out what the best tools are, what we need to do, um, also provide you with some um, homesteading and off-grid and simple living tips and tricks and um, just life skills sometimes, you know? So how many of you are ready to embrace new beginnings this year and really, there we go. It's fighting me today, but I appreciate you guys hanging in there and um, we'll make it through this. So, I am also really excited because I am um, working on something right now that I feel will help many of you. And as I progress through it, I'm reading a book right now. And hopefully next week or the following week, um, I will be able to share some details with you on ways that you can also improve your health um, in a very simple fashion um, for the new year. One thing I want to encourage is that make sure that everybody is drinking enough water, that you're getting enough sleep, and that your sleep time is a good time frame. Your body starts to heal itself from like 7.30 to 7.30. And in that time frame, you want to make sure that you're sleeping so that your body can heal itself, rejuvenate itself, and regroup. And... Um, I want to share. I want to share some uh, Bible verses with you today that have really helped us through our year this past year. These are ones that uh, really resonate. As I mentioned, uh, Psalms 91 is a big one that was uh, something we clung to, and also Ephesians 6, because it's always important to put our armor on when we're going through rough times. But it's also important to wear it when we're going through good times, so that we are strong and bold, and our light shines through. So keep that in mind. But Isaiah 40, 31 is one that we've been really clinging to right now. But those who trust in the Lord will find new strength. They will soar high on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not faint. Another one is Numbers 6, 24 through 26. May the Lord bless you and protect you. May the Lord smile on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord show you his favor and give you his peace. Good morning, Amanda. Tammy says, sleep is a big one for me. Don't get it near enough. Yeah, uh, these last couple nights, my, my lymphatic system has been clogging. I've started jumping rope. Um, you can also use a trampoline, a rebounder. Uh, that type of um, workout is really good to help keep the lymphatic system open. So despite not sleeping many hours, um, I find that if I stay in bed and sleep longer when this happens to me, that I just wake up and I'm exhausted and even more swollen. So I've been getting up, 
and I've been uh, jumping rope. That is my exercise that I've been doing. And let me tell you, I got, I have a, a leather jump rope with weighted handles. And those weighted handles, that, that motion is good. It keeps from the flabby arms. Um, I used to lift weights a lot, and I was always very um, focused on keeping my body nice and fit. Uh, just for our lifestyle, it's, it's very handy. Um, so I've, I've lost a lot of that. I've lost a lot of muscle tone. And um, being able to get back into a routine that helps me strengthen and build is really important. Um, I've had a lot of setbacks this year. Um, and I may have that as my immune system rebuilds. Um, the new thing that I'm reading up on uh, may be a huge help to me as well as everybody, so I will be reporting back on that. But um, getting up and jumping rope and then going for my walk and really invigorating myself, waking myself up, waking my body up, allowing my system to really start running efficiently. And then when I'm done here, I'm going to take a power nap, or at least try. So learning how to incorporate these things into our routine to help us rebuild so that if we're not getting enough sleep at night for whatever reason, um, that we can try to give ourselves a, a break and an ability to regroup during the day. You know, we all have different schedules. Some of us are working um, nine to five jobs. Others of us are working scattered jobs, uh, different hour jobs, depending on um, what's happening. My, my schedule, as much as I would like to keep it a routine schedule every day, I can't. Uh, I never know what kind of bomb is going to go off in my, at my homestead. There's always something that needs to be catered to, taken care of. Um, so being resilient and learning to roll with what comes your way is really important. I've learned not to panic over that. You know, this is what's set on my schedule right now. Oh, look, I've got to run and catch a uh, cat. I'll share pictures later. This is really funny. Thanksgiving Day, one of our cats decided to fall into the mountain man's olive oil vat or vegetable oil vat out in the smithy that he uses to quench and uh, harden his knives. The cat's only fur that was not matted fast to its body was its ears and the top of its head and it needed to be bathed multiple times kind of like baptizing a cat. It was quite interesting. However, I will give the cat credit. It was it didn't put up a fight, which was awesome because it was coated in vegetable oil. And it not only got three baths that day, it also got another three the next day to get all the oils out of its fur as much as we could so that its fur could do what it needs to in keeping it warm. So, like I said, things happen. You never know what's going to come your way. You never know what's going to put a kink in your schedule. And what I do is I have learned to see that in a positive light, that it's a divine break. For whatever reason, if it was humor alone with the cat, and the funny thing is, too, that the mountain man was the one bathing the cat. The mountain man is not very fond of cats, um, especially inside cats. Me neither. These are our outside mousers. Um, she enjoyed laying by the fire, heaped up on blankets with all the dogs laying around her. It was quite the scene. I have a picture of that too. But the thing is, is when you learn to roll with those things and whatever you were working on, you pick back up when the chaos is over. Um, if your schedule gets thrown off, <laughs> it was quite something. Um, and it happened to be our calico cat too, which, uh, very hairy cat, so to have it that matted in oil was quite something. But um, learning to roll with, with what happens instead of allowing it to dishevel you and stress you out in great ways, just learning to roll with it is one of the healthiest things you can do for yourself. Uh, I have that happen a lot. Um, one of the goals in my schedule is to write every day. And um, that sometimes is not the easiest of things, but I do make it a point. And if I can't write when I have it scheduled in the morning, I will pick it up later in the day. If for some reason my schedule is that jacked up that I can't write, it disappoints me. But the next day is my new beginning. And I pick it up and I keep going. You know, we have to learn to give ourselves grace, show ourselves grace, and understand that stuff is going to happen. And be able to be resilient enough to keep going and not let it stop us because what will happen is sometimes people will hit that point, they miss a day, they get discouraged, they get disgusted, and they don't keep going. Or 
well, I missed it that day. What's another day? You know, where that's where we need to be bold and we need to be really determined to make these things happen. I will become a much better writer by writing every day. I will finish pages and pages in my book so much faster. So um, it's important that we are willing to just roll with things, but more so than anything, to give ourselves grace. That is just so important, so, so important. And also, we gotta keep in mind, in society today, everybody feels that they need to have every square inch of our calendar scheduled. And that's really not true. My goal also for the new year is to work no more than four hours a day. I mean work, work, like writing and web design work and all of that. What I want to do is be very, very focused for four hours of my day because when I am focused like that, I can accomplish two days worth of work in an hour if I am left to be able to focus on things. So learning how to do that to fill our schedules with the things that we enjoy, like drawing, um, painting, all those things. There's no reason that we can't have those things in our schedule and still have open time that we can, oh my goodness, what am I going to do with that extra hour? That is what our schedules should be like. There's no reason we have to have every little nook and cranny of our schedule and our day mapped out because that's unrealistic. And I'm going to teach you how to do that. So bear with me, stay with me. This is really screaming at me right now. I want to mention that if you need accountability, if you need prayers to help you to be able to keep your focus on the important things in your life, don't hesitate to ask. And don't hesitate if you don't feel comfortable sharing it here to private message me or email me because we will add you to our prayer list. We have an ever-growing prayer list, and um, it's amazing, and I am so humbled and so joyful to have so many people reaching out to me, asking me for prayers. That means the world to me because, you know, that is a powerful, powerful tool, which I'm going to share with you in a little bit here. Good morning, Tam. Good words for the new year. God bless you, and God bless you, and thank you for joining me. I'm glad to have you have you joining me and I, and I look forward to having all of you join me throughout the year. Um, if you miss the live, don't sweat it. As it keeps spinning, I keep taking a drink of water. This is actually working out well for me, but I really feel badly for you guys. <laughs> We're talking about prayers. In the description below, there are a list of, uh, it's our full prayer list right now. And there have been some new additions and some updates that I'd like to share. Um, one is Tia is the first on our list. I'd really like to call out extra prayers for her. She had brain surgery last April. She has a special needs child that is um, low functioning. And she is trying to heal herself and, and take care of herself while also caring for this child. Her husband works. and. Um, things are really tough for them right now and she has been experiencing extreme head pain, extreme headaches, um, extreme uh, pain shooting down her left side then down her right side and I, I know that that's got to be scary for her, I know what I experience. And then to also have a child to care for while trying to keep yourself coherent and pain free so please pray for her. Um, uh, would really warm my heart. I'd also like to call out Pat Kenny. Um, Pat, you've been praying for, for his cancer and his heart. As a result of the chemo, his heart has been failing. He had a really huge uh, healing spurt. They figured out what was going on with his heart in, I believe, November and into December. But he's having problems again with his heart, and I'd really like you to help me pray for 100% uh, healing of his heart. Uh, he is an amazing man, such a positive man. Um, he has so much to offer, and he is just such a very important part in my life, and I would just love for you guys to be able to lift him. We've also had Scott and Crystal Powell added to our prayer list. They are um, beginning a church in Texas and have run into tremendous struggles. Um, 
Crystal has been dealing with health issues, and Scott just experienced an accident that will have him out of uh, the loop for, for two months healing. Uh, they've just been running into the wall walls everywhere. The enemy is really fighting them on this build. So, you know, if you could lift them uh, for healing and for um, the enemy to be rebuked in their life and in what they are trying to accomplish, I would so appreciate it. Um, also, uh, there's just a huge long list, which is awesome, of people that are need, in need of good prayers, healing prayers, um, all kinds of prayers. And, and God knows what their needs are. So if you would just consider lifting them when you take time to pray, I would greatly appreciate it. Courtney is on our list for prayers. And I want to share something with you guys. This is just so huge and so powerful. A month ago, Ms. Homesteader reached out to me on our YouTube channel. Um, in, uh, as a result of my Facebook Live, uh, the video was, uh, your faith arsenal should be part of your preparedness. And she reached out, and this is what she had to say. I work really hard not to be afraid. Fear is not of the Lord, but sev several faces of evil. I'd not be human if I said I had never fear I'm never fearful at times. I worry about our daughter's health and her current treatment options. As a parent of a child now 27 years old who has a genetic disease and has two brain tumors, one found at two years old and the other when she was 25 years old. She's undergone four major cranio craniotomies and is still smiling and praising God. Now the inoperable portion is growing. She's undergone dietary changes, no processed sugar, and several herbal-based tinctures. The old tumor, praise the Lord, has shown shrinkage after no, ch no change is dormant for 23 years. Just praying for these herbal remedies to work on the new tumor's growth so there is fear and anxiety in dealing with all the options, and which is what she needs to do. As her parents were always praying that God will take it all away and, can, and she can have a, a health healthy remainder of her life. I had responded back to her and uh, she shared more with me and this is just really awesome. She said, thank you for your prayers. They are a great comfort to us all. Thank you for your encouraging words and yes, I tell evil to get behind me in Jesus' name all the time and it does become easier the more we do it. Our daughter's name is Courtney. I enjoy your channel and God speaks to my heart through many of your talks and sharing of the word. Praise the Lord. Keep sharing and allowing God to speak through you. Have a very blessed Thanksgiving. And she says, we butchered two of our tom turkeys and rooster yesterday, but way in the 22-pound range, and we're blessed to have home-raised meat. We're looking for a quiet and family-filled time together on Thanksgiving, and then get ready for Courtney and myself to leave for Arizona on the 26th. She has appointments with a neurologist, oncologist on the 27th, and genetic specialist who specializes in, is in her disease. Uh, it's neurofibromatosis 1, I think I butchered that, on the 10th of December. Again, dear sister in Christ, thank you for your prayers. We covet them. We've had you and your family in our family's prayers since your health issues began and have updated you with the updates you shared on the videos. Okay, guys, this is just beyond powerful. Listen to this. I'm going to try to keep it together. This stuff always touches me. This was two days ago. A belated Merry Christmas to you and your family. Love your little tree. We didn't decorate this year due to the medical travel. We wanted to update you after traveling to Arizona, Mayo Hospital with our daughter, with many, many prayer warriors, she underwent her third craniotomy. This was truly an answer to prayer because we've been told that the remaining portion was inoperable without much damage caused. Her surgery was eight and a half hours long and before she went to the OR, she told her surgeons that she'd be home for Christmas. They smiled and said that's a good goal. But praise the Lord, she suffered no damages and was out of critical care in by the end of the second day, in a private room for one day and released the next. The surgeon said she was one tough camper and he couldn't believe how very well she was doing. Her surgery was on the 14th, came out of the surgery at midnight, was up walking fast on the 16th after the drain tube was removed. After being released from the hospital, on the 18th, we stayed in the area for a few days, then went 
home with my dad 60 miles from the hospital. But long story short, we both flew home on the 23rd to Montana and had the best Christmas ever. She has post-op appointments in mid-January, but she's doing super. Thank you for your prayers and continue praying for complete healing. Praise the Lord for God's gift, our Savior. That is just awesome. That is just awesome. I and mean, what kind of a testimony is that? And I can't help but get emotional. It's just so awesome to see how God works and, and the power of prayer. I Like I said to you guys, you know, I have experienced, we have experienced so many amazing <laughs> I had to get a tissue. I'm such a I'm such an easy crier when it comes to this stuff. This stuff just rips my heart apart. Good way, in a good way. So, you know, give me some hearts on that. Is that not an amazing testimony? And guys, we have experienced so many miracles and God's grace so much over the last three years, and the miracles have been so extremely visible that I just can't not share them and to see our channel growing like this and to see all of you being a part of it praying for people requesting prayers and just sharing these kind of testimonies thank you so much Ms. Homesteader I know you're gonna watch this eventually on YouTube and just thank you for sharing this and Give God the glory. That is just amazing. And just exciting to see that Courtney has a chance to, you know, have the full life that they're asking for. I totally get that with having the mountain boy and working through what we have with his autism. There's nothing that touches a mother's heart more than to be able to help our children heal and to be successful and to be all that they can be. How about it, Tammy? She says, all praise goes to the mighty God. You know, it's just amazing. So many testimonies like this that we are seeing. And I'm going to keep sharing them because how powerful is that? How powerful is that to see God answer prayer? And, you know, I am giving God all the glory for our life right now. You know, I don't know what he is going to do in our life. You know, we may end up homeless. And you know what? If that is what God's will is for us, we are going to embrace it head on and we are going to use the skills we have to put ourselves under a roof again however we need to. If we are blessed that God works a miracle here for us, whether he sells our home yesterday or whether um, he works another miracle, we will be praising him for that too. And I'm taking you on that journey because we need to see other people regardless what the struggle, um, whether it's cancer, whether it's um, tumors, whether it's uh, marriages being brought back together, whether it's miracles in financial situations, whatever it is, you know, we have a testimony to share, each and every one of us. We're just not all bold enough to share them, and that's okay. But I want to encourage you, as part of the new beginning this year, to be bold. To be bold in giving yourself grace. To be bold in thinking that you can accomplish these things. Being bold to embark on a new journey. Something very new to you that makes everybody else shake their head. Who cares? It's your goal. It's your divine gift. It could. It, it's just awesome. And I'm just so excited. You know, every day is a new journey. Every day is a new beginning. And that, that's what we need to do is embrace these new journeys and embrace things. Drinking my water. Like I said, I'm going to use those breaks as divine water breaks. Okay, I want to share something with you. I know you all like sweet treats, right? So this is one I made yesterday for my guys and for me. And it's a healthy sweet treat with how I make it. Um... These are no-bake chocolate oatmeal cookies. Okay, now I've improvised this recently. Um, Mountain Boy is back on his dairy-free diet. He is still on the gluten, but he has removed dairy again. Uh, we found that it was just uh, revamping his uh, aggressive behavior and his oppositional behavior and so we have brought the dairy back out of our um, 
are cooking, which let me tell you, after several months of that, it has totally messed with my head. I've, I've got to rethink everything and that's driving me crazy because uh, for the last 13, 14 years, I've been thinking no dairy and now I got to think about it when I give him things. Um, just uh, for example, we were out the other day and um, they had natural, uh, healthy <laughs> peanut butter cups on special so I treated him for, with one um, and I had to rethink that because it has dairy in it now where before I could have treated him with that so just making me think a little harder which is probably good but these no-bake chocolate oatmeal cookies have a stick of butter and we are using earth balance to get the non-dairy if you're going for healthy and you are uh, using butter use organic butter um, three tablespoons of cocoa, a cup of coconut sugar, and a half a cup of evaporated milk. I, instead of evaporated milk, I use cashew milk and I put the milk in first and I boil that for a little bit first to get the excess water out, okay? And then I add the other ingredients. And you also add a cup of chocolate chips. That is another new addition to make it chocolatier. Is that a word? I think so. So you mix those ingredients that I just mentioned together and bring them to a boil. Get them so that they're all melted together. Caught wiping my nose. My nose was still running from crying before. All right, so sorry. Thank you guys for hanging with me. This keeps spinning. Um, you mix those together, you bring them to a boil, and after you've turned off the heat, you add a half a cup of peanut butter. You can use organic peanut butter. I use Earth Balance peanut butter, and I use either the coconut uh, creamy or just the regular creamy. Really good peanut butter. And you add three cups of quick oats. Now, if you're doing gluten-free, make sure that you check to make sure the oats are gluten-free. Oats are naturally gluten-free. However, when they're processed, they are put on conveyors with wheat flour. So if you are catering to somebody with a gluten intolerance or that needs to be away from gluten for dietary reasons such as autism, make sure you are looking for gluten-free organic oats. So, um, and then a teaspoon of vanilla and you just, uh, oh, so painful, sorry guys. All right, and then you just mix that all together and you can take that and drop that onto parchment paper on either a cookie sheet or in a container and um, just drop a spoonful and let them cool and those are a really good no-bake treat. So I will take a picture of the recipe and include that down below and also include that in the video for those of you that are watching from YouTube. So just a little recipe to share today and a good healthy treat. Now I want to share something with you. This kind of goes along with our new beginnings. Um, this is from my devotional, which for those of you that are new, it is the word for today. And um, you can find them by going to wordforyou.com. This is something I get from my church, and it is just an incredible devotional. So, Genesis 42 9, Joseph remembered the dreams which he had dreamed. And it's called, okay, it's called Ask God for a Dream One. The dream of Joseph sustained him through experiences that would crush many of us. He was resented by his family, repeatedly tempted by his boss's wife, then thrown into prison for 13 years for a crime he never committed. Yet at his lowest points, God was with him, arranging each step he took and positioning him to fulfill his calling as the deliverer of his people. The psalmist talks about the strange way in which God led Joseph. Then he sent someone to Egypt ahead of them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet with fetters and placed his neck in an iron collar. Until the time came to fulfill his dreams, the Lord tested Joseph's character. Your gender does not limit God, and your age is no problem to him. Society may glamorize youth and marginalize old age, but your season of life doesn't limit God. But in order to but in order to have confidence that God will fulfill your dream, you must know that it was born of his spirit. Those who are in the flesh cannot please God. Your dream cannot be born out of your unmet ego needs or a selfish desire to have the same level of success as someone else or your need to prove something to someone like your ex or your family or your boss or your peers, etc. 
Check the source of your dream because God is the source. He will provide all the resources necessary to fulfill it. Because when God is the source, he will provide all the resources necessary to fulfill it. That is an important part of that. So do you have a dream? No? Ask God to give you one. So if you struggle at this time of year, you know, and, and throughout the year as to what is your purpose, your purpose is something that we can only gain from God. You know, we can muddle through life and, and think we know, but like it said, if you have selfish intentions or, you know, you're, you're not doing things for the right reason, you're not in line with your gift. And the thing is, when you are doing what you are called to do, God will open the doors. God will line things up. God will fulfill that dream for you. And it's really awesome. And, you know, I think that's why we have the thought process that we do right now and that we are, are okay in our circumstances. You know, our circumstances are... Hey, I'm so sorry about all the spinning today and all the breaking up, but... You know, our circumstances are rough, but we can see God moving. We are hearing that still small voice. We are looking, seeking, and following his lead and are getting answers. And sometimes you go through stages where you don't get those answers, and it can be very discouraging. We walked that too last year. Um, but you keep your eye on the prize and um, it's amazing what will transpire in front of your eyes and and for other people to see um, that's a great way for you to be a light um, as you walk through certain things highlights exciting things hardships you know people are watching and we can be such a light and a blessing to others so I'm excited for our new beginnings. I'm excited to see what the new year holds. I'm excited to see more miracles unfold for all of us. You know, Ms. Homesteader, you, you made my, my week just such awesome news and so excited for Courtney, so glad that she's healing and, and doing so well. And her attitude, her attitude is key. That is just awesome. And, and that's what will help us all is our attitude, our desires to persevere, our desires to be resilient. And, and you know, we're, allow yourself to have rough days. Allow yourself to, you know, fall off the wagon that you, you missed a goal, you, you missed a, a daily habit. But be willing to jump back on and keep going. And I just want to encourage you this year. This is just the beginning of our new beginnings. I have so much to share. I'm so excited. God is just filling me with information to share with you. And I look forward to every week um, something, something else that uh, came across my... Uh, I, w I want to share this because I think this will help some of you as well. Um, let me see if I can quickly find it. Maybe I'll save it for next week. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not readily finding it. So I will save that for next week because it was very powerful. Um, so guys, give me some hearts if you're enjoying this. Give me some hearts if you are joining me on beginning and if you're on YouTube and you are getting this um, be sure to uh, leave me some comments below I want to know that you guys are in on this I want to I want to hear you celebrating with me this isn't all about me you guys are the hero to the story so I want you to share with me uh, your goals um, your struggles your successes you know not only will we help each other um, to be accountability partners but we will help each other because we're all human and we don't give you know we don't take that into consideration you know we are human we are flesh and blood and you know we make mistakes we struggle uh, but it's also when you when you are bold enough to share your weakest spots it's also where you shine because when you excel you know, people can see you going from one level to the other. So, you know, that's, 
that's why we are being transparent with everything that's going on in our lives right now because I know that there are other people walking similar walks, other people that are, you know, can gain from our perspective and, you know, also from our struggles and our, our successes. So please share with me and thank you for the hearts. And if you feel that this is going to benefit other people this year, please share these. It helps me reach more people. It helps us to help others. And I just think that's really important. Um, if you guys have questions along the way, uh, Okay, I'm going to end this with a prayer for us all, and I look forward to seeing you guys next week. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for what you're going to do in each and every one of our lives this year, and how you're going to give us all the courage and strength to be bold, resilient, and persevere, and, and be able to show ourselves grace. You show us grace and mercy every day. And we neglect to do that for ourselves and others. And it's really important that we incorporate that into our day to day. And that we learn that, you know, not every hour and every second of every day needs to be filled with something other than you. To wrap your loving arms around everyone out there, our audience, those that are watching, those that are on YouTube. And Lord, I just ask that you give them the courage and the strength they need. Let them feel your presence. Lord, I just thank you for what you're going to do in all of our lives.